We are live. Hey guys, I wasn't here on Friday. I don't think I was last Friday either. Tons of stuff going on. I don't want to get into it, but I got a little bit of time before uh, today's weekly online game, uh, monthly coaching program call. So I wanted to put something up because, uh, man, life is busy. Anyways, so three things that I get asked all the time, just did some one-on-ones. It's a limiting belief. It's an excuse a lot of people use. And uh, they always say, like, I'm too busy. I'm too busy to meet girls. How do I do that? Where do I make time for that? And so when I worked for my old company, I always joke about this. How's like, how is the, what's the worst thing to do with something you love is make it your job. And that's because I, I realize there's a little a little change with it, though. If you're the boss, if you're the one who's in charge of it, you're the one running the show, or you have cool bosses, then it's awesome. And you're literally working and doing your passion, which you'd be doing anyways in your free time. But if you have bad bosses and people you don't like working with and micromanagers, then they ruin everything, right? So when I became a dating coach, PUA, uh, people that I worked with and for like kind of stole the magic from it. And I didn't really like doing it. I, as, soon as, as soon as time I could leave the office, I was out. I wasn't hanging out with the other guys. And um, I just didn't want to deal with any of it. So I had to figure out a way. I, very quickly, I was like, ooh, I might be getting a little rusty. I'm not going out and, and approaching and stuff like I am. So I had to figure out a, a little solution. And I always joke about being lazy. And I don't want to do any more work than I have to. So this is what I came up with. And I used it for years and years. And great success. Especially when you work from home also, this is like part of it. So number one, online game. If you have a cool DHV life, DHV demonstration of higher power and uh, pictures of that should be a natural byproduct. It's hard when guys aren't living a cool life doing things they're passionate about and they love. So number one, live a cool life, DHV life, demonstrate higher value. I think I said power a second ago. Um, get DHV pictures and set up a cool profile. If you need help, obviously there's the online game program. Um, I'm here to help if you need it. That's number one. Most of the guys though spend way too much time online. They wake up, they're on it all day. They spend money. Like uh, they're on it nonstop all day. I hate that. I never spent, I, I think I spent money once just to test it, but I've never really spent money. It was like for research for the program, but I've never really spent money on the program. Any of these online dating profile things, I don't want to give them my money. Um, so I, I just do the absolute minimum, excuse me, maximum that they allow you to do. So minimum amount of work, which is wake up in the morning, swipe, go to bed at night, swipe, you're on the can, swipe. That's it. As soon as you're maxed out for the day, you're done. Be picky with it too. Don't just go ding, 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 because it'll throw off the algorithm. So other than that, the only other time I'm on the app is when I'm responding to a message from a woman. So that's it. So right there, if you got a good profile, yeah, you'll be on it a, a bit during the day. If you don't have a good profile, you're only spending a few minutes on it, like on each app. So, and do all the big ones, Bumble, Tinder. I, don't, I think plenty of fish is still around. Um, Coffee meets bagel hinge, like set all of them up and, and get them rocking for you, but it shouldn't take too much time. That's number one. Number two is like before work, you're going to work, you need a coffee. You're going to go get a protein shake at some place, whatever it is. You're going to go get a workout in. Give yourself a little bit of time. And it's not just before work. It's before and after work. Give yourself a little bit of time to socialize. So if you give yourself, if you, if you don't give yourself any window to, to stay there and make small talk with someone and you literally have to go to work because you're going to get fired, then you're, you're handicapping yourself. So give yourself an extra 15, 20 minutes to hang out there, sip your coffee, take your time changing, whatever it is and be social. So same thing after work, you get off the clock. Don't don't set up your schedule where you have to go home and you don't have any free time. Give yourself a little bit of time to run to the grocery store. I used to go to like Costco and buy food for the week or for two weeks. Don't do that. Go to Ralph's, go to Whole Foods, go to Trader Joe's, go to Fry's, go a couple times a week. So I would go to like Ralph's and buy, which is by, by the old office, across the street so i'd go there and buy chicken and buy some veggies or whatever i'm gonna make for dinner and then do some socializing go home eat make dinner the next day oh i still have some chicken left over oh, oh i need something with it i need to get some pesto so i go down to whole foods now i have a reason to go there and i'm just going in there to get some pesto and now i get a chance to or some mozzarella or something and i have a chance to make some cold approaches 
And then the next day, oh, I'm going to Trader Joe's. I got to buy a couple other things because I ate all that. So it's like you're, you're, you're buying groceries multiple times a week. Same thing when you go to the mall. That was like, and that's where that clicked. When I was a kid, I hated going like back to school shopping. And so it all, all day, it's in Arizona, it's hot. All day you go to the mall, you're trying on all these clothes, you're sweating, you can't find anything you like. Like that's not the way to do it. You're supposed to like throughout the year, throughout the seasons, go to the mall, buy new clothes, try things, new, new seasons, clothes change. Like you're kind of shopping more like a girl. You go there, you buy one or two shirts. A couple months later, you go back, you buy a couple more pairs of jeans or shorts or whatever. So I would start doing that and uh, spreading it out. And that's the third one is going to the mall. But same thing with a grocery store. Just don't do all your shopping once a week. And then you don't have any reason to go out to the store. So spread it out. Make the excuse. Make the reason for why you're there. Walk around with something in your hand. Maybe makes you feel more comfortable. Because uh, I think I got like a big hammerhead going on. You walk around with um, something in your hand or a bag. Makes you feel more comfortable. It's more congruent instead of just being the guy walking around. Because now you're there with purpose. And you could go to the salad bar. And that was something I'd always do. And I'd even time it where I would like wait most people get off work at a certain time go there a little bit after and then it's going to be busy give yourself an hour after that and that's when most of the girls would go to like a yoga class or the gym where they go home and let their dog out and then now they come back to whole foods and they're hitting the salad bar and buying stuff so i would go there and just buy some stuff i needed for whatever i'm gonna make for dinner or just wanted to stock up on and so anyways now i have an excuse i have a route to be there i'm, I'm at the salad bar doing stuff i'm very natural to make conversation to the girl next to you so lastly, I said the mall, that's the third. Walk around looking for a new wallet, looking for a new belt. I'm always looking for a new wallet. I love wallets. If I can find a cooler one, great. So far, I haven't found a cooler one than the one I bought five, six years ago on Kickstarter, but I'm always looking for a newer one. I'm always looking for a newer belt. I'm always looking for new shoes. Doesn't mean I have to buy them, but hit the mall a few times a week. Talking to women that like work in the stores isn't a cold approach, but when I'm doing one-on-ones or when you're working, working your way out uh, from, from a breakup or shaking the rust off, that's a really easy way of doing it because they kind of have to talk to you. Don't be creepy. Don't be inappropriate. But it's a warm approach. So you can talk to them a little bit. And then you can talk to some people while you're shopping. Hey, what do you think of this shirt? When you're walking around the mall, you can ask them directions or ask them a question. See an Apple bag. You're like, oh, hey, real quick, I'm, uh, where's the Apple store at? You see a girl walking in the direction of the Apple store. You're like, hey, do you know where the Apple store is? Oh, it's this way? Okay, cool. Let's be walking buddies. And you start talking to her along the way. So super simple. Um, I think the mistake a lot of guys do too is they hit the mall. They have like three point, four point malls where they have the anchor stores in different spots. So what I would do is hit like one of them and then hit that row, turn, hit the row back and then get in my car and leave. And then the next day I'd hit the deck section and I'd hit that row, turn, come back. So I could hit the mall like, in three days, three days in a row, I could hit three different sections. If there's an upstairs or downstairs, then hit both of them, spread them out, whatever you want. But right there, you're getting out of the house. You're talking to people, being social. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. And you're putting things in place, like I said, to kind of force you to get out and make the excuse to go out and talk to people. Instead of, well, I don't need to do anything. I, I'm just, I'm comfortable sitting at home. I can play a video game right now. Like, what's the purpose of going outside? But, oh, hey, I got to go to the grocery store. Oh, hey, I got to get a new pair of boots. Like, all of a sudden, there's a reason for you to, like, go out. And so there's studies that back this all up. Just getting out, running errands, like, being social and just running errands can help relieve social anxiety and depression and all that. Let alone doing something that's going to help you, like, improve your life. Like, working on your social skills, going to the gym, going hiking, all that. So getting out of the house, doing stuff. If you're not doing that, you're doomed. And like I said, online game, grocery stores, coffee shops, before, after work, mall, right there. You could easily get 20 plus approaches a week, which is the first homework assignment I give everyone is 20 cold approaches a week. Right there, easy peasy, you could do it. So quick tip, that is three ways of meeting people if you're uh, busy, too busy, which realistically, if you want something bad enough, you'll make time for it. So once you start really making this a part of your life and, and picking and choosing and deciding that this is an aspect of your life that you have to fix, all of a sudden you can make a lot more time for it. And I hated going to bars and clubs, but when I first started out and was going out with my wingman, three, four nights a week, we were going out to the bars and clubs. And uh, I wasn't drinking. I was drinking water. I couldn't afford to go out drinking three, four times a week. And uh, 
it was it was the places I never liked going in the first place, but I did it, and thank God I did it because it helped me with all my social skills. And you don't have to keep going to bars and clubs. You don't have to keep doing all that stuff, but you're practicing stepping out of your comfort zone, talking to people, small talk, flirting, getting good at it, so that when you meet someone that actually like matters that you that you want to really make a connection with, not just someone that's a pretty face, but actually someone you really connect with. You did all this practice to get there. So you're prepared for it. That's key. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, reach out. I, uh, I'm going to do, I got to pack real quick. I got to help some family stuff right after the call. So the other thing I'm doing is, I don't know if you guys have seen these mesh tastic little, uh, Laura devices, little 32, boards i'm, I'm uh, playing with that with my with my buddies and all the the radio stuff i'm into but that's something super super nerdy i think it's cool though and i'm passionate about it so just that alone um and actually one of the reasons i didn't do the the call on or this uh, live stream on friday is i was going to a meetup where they were teaching about that stuff and then last week also i think it was a, on a sunday I was talking to a guy who was helping me out and he goes, Oh, Hey, I'm actually going to a, a, a meetup on that. Another one with guys who are way more into it than him. And he's like, if you want to come, let me know. And I looked at my, my watch. I was like, Oh, I got like 30 minutes before I can leave the house. I have to, to get there in time. And he, even I felt a twinge of that right then. I was like, Ooh, that's a little out of my comfort zone. I don't, I'm not going to know anyone there. Uh, I got to get ready right to the second. And there was a million reasons of why I did, shouldn't have gone. And then I was like, wait, that's loser talk. That's AFC thinking grab my stuff, went over there, made some friends, met some, some guy uh, who actually was pretty close to me. He's really into this stuff. And uh, he's like a similar mindset as me. And so, so made some new acquaintances, potentially friends, people in my social network, people who can help me out with this stuff that add value to my life, like win-win. So even I feel it, not all the time, but sometimes. And then I, the difference is I just know that like that feeling is, is negative and it's going to hold me back. So then I'm like, wait, don't listen to that. Don't let him win. Now I have to go out. And I threw on some clothes real quick, went out there. Only a handful of people there. And uh, maybe not the coolest, coolest bunch of people if you go to a ham radio meetup. A lot of old guys who are into radios and stuff. But, man, they know. They know so much. So, to me, if I'm always learning and leveling up, like, that's part of living a DHV life. And stuff that you're into, that's part of living a DHV life. So, someone might try to bust my balls about it. But I like it. And potentially it's life-saving information I'm learning. So it's such a great hobby. Anyways, if you guys have questions about that, reach out. But I'm going to be uh, setting up some of these and I'm bringing these little mesh-tastic uh, Helltech boards around to friends and family and setting them up. And it's actually making, expanding like a private network where you can uh, communicate with people through text message um, if the phones go down, which they just did a couple weeks ago. So I like that stuff. Anyways, I'm going over there. So I'm going to run. Hope this helped. Any questions, reach out. Later, guys.